GCVWR, GVW, UVW? What do all these mean? And are they important? Well, stick around because I'm going to tell you what all of these mean, why they're important, and how to find them. Don't want to miss this one. Hey everybody, welcome back to Why Wait. My name is Chris, and today we have an important video for you. It's all about towing capacity and knowing your tow numbers. Why they're important, and how to find them if you're not too sure. I see it all the time. How much can I tow? What's my truck rated for? What's my payload capacity? What's GCVWR? People are always looking for help, and they're not too sure how to find these numbers. They want to tow safe, but they're not too sure how. So this video is gonna be for you. Now we do have a lot to cover today. We're gonna to touch base on all that, what all those little acronyms mean and how to find them and all that good stuff. Plus, we're gonna talk about some other important numbers that you should keep handy while you're traveling because these numbers will be important as well. So while today may not be the funnest video and it's gonna be long, we got a lot to cover. I really encourage you to stick around, stay put, especially if you're a new RVer or even if you've been uh, RVing for a while and you're just not too sure uh, if you're overweight or how to find these numbers. So if you're not too sure how to find this information or what this information means, let's go ahead and jump into it. And I'll put some bookmarks down below. That way you can jump to a certain section in case you want to just uh, touch base on something you weren't too sure about and skip some video. But try to stay tuned for most of it because we have some really important information to cover today. Let's get to it. So basically, I wanna go over these numbers today. I'm gonna to be referencing my truck and my camper and how I found my numbers. And then you can just use that information to compare it to yours. Now, I do have my computer right here, my laptop. So I may glance down at it a few times. That's a lot of numbers, things I can't remember off the top of my head. So you may see me look down sometimes because I'm gonna reference a spreadsheet and I'll reference that and I'll talk about my numbers, how I found them, and then we'll talk about how to find your numbers by plugging in the exact same numbers from your truck and camper. But first, let's go ahead and define what all these acronyms mean. So we even know what we mean when we say GVW and stuff. So I'm gonna to touch base on what all of these mean and what they stand for and why they're important. And just to try to make the video a little bit more interesting so you're not just staring at me talking the whole time, I'll probably use some background footage from our travels or my work or anything, just so you have something more interesting to look at while we talk about all these numbers and explain everything, the acronyms and all that kind of stuff and how to find them. So number one, we're going to talk about curb weight. You're going to hear this. Curb weight is your truck, dry weight of the truck, basically as it's sold to you off the lot. No cargo, no people, no upgrades, nothing like that. Dry weight of the truck with a full fuel tank and this number is going to be important and that is curb weight when we say that dry weight of the truck number two gvw gross vehicle weight so this is going to be the weight of the truck with everybody in it your passengers your dogs your toolbox your tonneau cover tools tires anything that you would have in the truck traveling down the road gvw Gross vehicle weight. This is how much your truck is going to weigh once everything's in it, unhitched of course, no camper, just how much extra weight you've added to the truck. Number three, GVWR, gross vehicle weight rating. So this is going to be your truck rated for, how much is your truck rated to carry with all that weight? So once you have all the people, all your tools, your toolbox, bed covers, whatever, you've added, this is going to be the rating that you're not supposed to exceed. Next up, GCVWR, gross combined vehicle weight rating. Or sometimes you might just see this as GCWR, gross combined weight rating. Got to have that C in there because this is combined. This is a maximum amount of weight that you're allowed to have combined with your trailer. This is your truck and camper together the weight of the camper loaded, the weight of your truck loaded, the maximum amount of weight that the truck is able to tow 
combined together. Number six, and this important one, payload slash cargo capacity. This is going to be how much weight your vehicle is allowed to add to it, including the camper or pin weight, without exceeding the gross vehicle weight rating. So we talked about that gross vehicle weight rating, how much weight is the truck rated for. So once you start putting people in it, toolboxes, and you drop a fifth wheel on top of it, you're not going to want to exceed your payload slash cargo capacity. But this is what most people usually have an issue with these trucks. We're going to talk about hitch weight or pin weight and whether you're towing a traditional pull behind travel trailer or, or a fifth wheel, your hitch weight or your pin weight is going to be how much weight from that camper is added to your truck. We're going to talk about how to find it and we'll get into all that. Now we have three main numbers we're going to be referencing when we talk about the camper fifth wheel travel trailer. That's going to be the UVW unloaded vehicle weight, the um, gross vehicle weight rating and the cargo capacity. All three of these for your camper now we're gonna be talking about. Now, the UVW is unloaded vehicle weight. This is how much weight the camper weighs before you put anything in it. But for the most part, it's pretty much in, you know, before you start adding water to the tanks, put new mattresses in, washers and dryers, satellite dish on top, None of that will be included in the basic dry weight of the camper. So this number goes up quick. Believe me, trust me, if you're a full-timer, it goes up real quick. Then you're gonna see the GVWR, gross vehicle weight rating. That's maximum amount of weight that this camper is supposed to hold. And this is usually based on your axles and your frame as well. You're gonna see a lot of people upgrade their axles to upgrade a few more pounds, which is fine and it will help, but you can never change that DOT sticker on the side of your camper, but you will have peace of mind knowing that you've upgraded. And lastly, cargo capacity, and that should be listed here as well. And it's basically going to be the difference between the two numbers we just talked about. And the cargo capacity is just how much weight you're allowed to put into your storage in your camper, including food, clothing, everything. So now that we know what all those abbreviations and acronyms mean, well, how do we find them? How do we do the calculations to find them and see if we're towing safely? Or if I'm in the market to buy a truck or a new camper, what do I have to get to tow safely? And why is it important? Why are these numbers important? Well, obviously for going down the road, safety, number one reason. There's many issues that can arise from towing that you're just not ready to tow pulling more weight than you're supposed to. We're talking blowouts. You're going to increase your chance of blowouts. We're talking broken leaf springs. More importantly, can you stop? Do you have the braking power to stop the weight that is now pushing your vehicle when you're trying to stop because you're not rated for it? And then you have fish tailing. Too much weight behind you, like in a travel trailer, not loaded right, you're going to get fish tailing. Listen, this is for the safety of you, your family, and everybody else on the road. That's why these numbers are important. You're going to see a lot of people say, oh, it's fine. I can tow this. I can tow that. And I'm sure you could. Shoot, I could hook my car and I could tow it. It's going to move the camper. You could get any vehicle to tow anything. But again, is it going to stop it? Is it going to tow it safely? Is it going to handle the weight? So that's why this is important. Okay, so let's go ahead and break it down. Talk about how to find these numbers and how to do these calculations so you can see if you're safe on the road. I have a 2008 F450, 6.4 liter, 4x4, dually, long bed. These are things you're going to want to know. I have the high capacity tow package, which makes a difference for my numbers. Some of the numbers we talk about, you can find right on the sticker inside your door. Some of them you need to go to the manufacturer's website. As you can see, I can pull up my numbers. I can pull up my truck right here. But you have to know a few different things about your truck. As you can see with mine, I have the 4.88 gear ratio on my rear axle. It's pretty rare. They don't even make these on 450s anymore. Great for extra torque, but not good for my fuel mileage. So there's a little sticker where you can find these different little ratings and codes. And you can find them to see what kind of tow packages you may have. But you can look up the codes online. And you can see I have the 8L on mine. And that's how I know my rear axle gear ratio is a 4.88. And I know that it came with the high capacity tow package. 
you can see on this chart right here, straight from the Ford company, I can look over it. I can follow 450. You got to know if you got regular cab, crew cab, is a manual, is it automatic, is it four by four, two by two. All of it comes in play when you're looking for your specific numbers for your truck. It's not just saying, oh, I got a 2012 F-150. Let me go look at my numbers. A lot of these numbers are very specific on what packages you have and how the truck is outfitted and, in, and what's installed on it. So with that said, let's go ahead and I'm going to pull up my laptop here and you'll see as I talk. Now the curb weight on this truck right here is 8,687 pounds. That's my truck, tri weight, no, no cargo, nothing added to it. Next, we're going to find the GVWR, gross vehicle weight rating. And I got it on my chart, 14,500 pounds for my truck. That's a maximum allowable weight that I can have in this truck. All my passengers, some tires in the back and toolboxes, dogs, anything else. And it does add up quick. And that's the limit for this truck. Next, my GCVWR, gross combined vehicle weight rating. And that's going to be my truck weight plus the weight of whatever I'm towing is 33,000 pounds. And that's a little bit inflated because of that high capacity tow package that I have with this truck. So that's a maximum amount between whatever your camper weighs with it loaded and your truck loaded that you're capable of towing down the road. Next, I got a payload of 6,000 pounds on this truck. And the payload is going to be how much weight you can basically put into the back of the truck total with the pin weight and the camper and everything. The next number you're going to want to find is your towing capacity. And this is where you got to check conventional towing or fifth wheel slash gooseneck towing. Um, we obviously have fifth wheel slash gooseneck towing where the weight's over the axle. And you will have a higher rating with a fifth wheel versus tra traditional travel trailer. Scroll up here and look at your charts. You'll also see the weight rating for conventional towing if you're just towing with a bumper. And again, I'm at 24,100 pounds, fifth wheel gooseneck towing capacity. Next up, you have your steer axle and your drive axle. Now you can find the maximum allowable weight for this, usually on your door sticker. You can also find it online. So we've basically covered all the dry weights and all the maximum allowable weight ratings for everything for my truck and camper. But how do we find how much the weight of my camper is in the bed? How do we find out the gross combined vehicle weight rating? So we're going to get into all those numbers and how to find them in a minute. But first, if you guys like the video, I'd appreciate it if you hit that like button and definitely subscribe to our channel. If you like the video and you also like videos on RV maintenance, DIY projects, and anything like that. So here's how we find our pin weight and our other numbers to see if we're within our parameters. A few different ways. Number one, cat scales. We've all seen them at the truck stops. I use them all the time. You have a little app. The app is convenient. It's a couple bucks. Now you fill out some information ahead of time. You go to the location. You put in the number of the location. You don't even have to talk to the operator. You don't have to be intimidated by these. The app makes it so easy. You don't even have to go inside to pay. The app's going to charge you. It's going to give you the readings right there on the phone within a few minutes. So I love the app. It's a great method. Number two, if you're an Escapees member, which a lot of full-time uh, members are, some of the home locations, they have a smart way system. And that's pretty cool because we did that right when we hit the road. It's a great system because it gives you more numbers than just a cat scale. It's going to actually read out each individual tire and how much weight is sitting on each one of those tires and how much weight is on your camper, even from side to side. And another one, if you go to these um, RV shows or maybe Grand Design rallies, they have another company going around where you can usually do the exact same thing. The weight readings are going to be a lot better than cat scales. These are three ways that you can primarily get your camper and truck weighed. So let's go ahead and talk about getting these numbers on the scale. And I'm going to use a traditional cat scale, which most people have access to. It's kind of the easiest way. First thing you want to do when you pull up to the cat scale, just pull in with your truck and camper, totally loaded, just like you're going down the road and hooked up. And the best way to do it is make sure you are going down the road. Make sure you have all your passengers. Make sure you are on a trip, just like you would on a camping trip. Go ahead, pull into the scale, and you're going to get three different ways. But make sure you pull up so your axles are on the three different scales. 
you're going to get your steer axle, the front of the truck. You're going to get the drive axle, which is the back axle of your truck, and it's going to have the weight of the camper on it as well. And then you're going to get the third reading, and that's the third axle, which is your uh, camper axles on the last scale back there. Go ahead, get those numbers. You're going to get those numbers right there on the app. And if not, you can go inside and, and pay as well and get a printout reading. After that, pull through the scale, find a spot to park, and then go ahead and drop the camper. Unhitch it. Make sure it's chalked up and everything. It's safe. And then drive back around to the scale and then pull your truck on. And when you pull your truck on, you want the front axle on one part of the scale and your drive axle on the back part of the scale. And you want to go ahead and get that weight rating with your truck. Make sure you keep everybody in the vehicle when you do this. Don't let them run and go to the bathroom and get food because you need the weight of everybody sitting in here. You need the accurate reading of what that truck is carrying going down the road. But if you got four people who jump out, your, your weight's going to be off a couple hundred pounds. So now that we have the weight of the truck, we know how much it weighs by itself. We got that number, 10,360 pounds. Now, all you have to do now is look at your numbers from when you weighed with the truck and camper combined on the scale. All you have to do is add up all those numbers and subtract the truck weight. Subtract the 10,360 pounds, which you know is my truck, and that's going to give you the weight of your RV. You are at 16,211 pounds. Now that does put us just a hair over, which is pretty good. So we know how to find the weight of the truck now. We know how to find the weight of the camper now. We got those two down. And for the most part, you're gonna find out that you're, you're probably within your parameters of your tow capacity. As you can see, our tow capacity is 24,100 pounds. Our camper going down the road is 16,211. So we have plenty of wiggle room there. In fact, we have 7,889 pounds still left to tow capacity. So our tow capacity is good. But how do we find the pin weight or the hitch weight? And this is an important one, and this is where a lot of people get maxed out. But how are we going to find that? How do we figure it out? How do I know how much the front end of my camper weighs just sitting in the truck? It's actually pretty simple. We already got all the numbers. So we're going to look back at some of those scale numbers that we got. What we're going to do is we have those axle numbers from the truck. All we want to do is look at the drive axle, the back axle, the drive axle. Now, we weighed it unloaded without the camper, just the truck by itself, and that drive axle was 4,700 pounds. Now, when we were hitched up to the camper, that drive axle with the fifth wheel sitting on it, that drive axle was 8,000 pounds. 560 pounds. All that extra weight is the difference of the camper. So you take your drive axle, 8,560 pounds, subtract the other weight of the drive axle when the camper was not on it, the 4,700 pounds, subtract it, and here you got 3,860 pounds. So my pin weight is 3,860 pounds. So when I put that fifth wheel in the back of my truck, that's how much weight is added into the back of my truck onto my truck. The rest of the camper weight is obviously distributed to the back axles. So now that we know the pin weight, how do we make sure that it's not too much weight in the back of my truck? This is usually when most people are not rated or exceed their limit. So luckily I have a payload capacity of 6,000 pounds. It's an F450, it's a little bit beefier, higher capacity tow package as well. So we have to stand on that number. So we take the 3,860 pounds of the camper hitch weight that we just found out. We add that to the 1,637 pounds of cargo weight. Those two numbers add up to 5,533 pounds, leaving me 467 pounds of spare cargo weight to still play around with. You're going to find that a lot of these trucks are going to have the tow capacity, but you're going to find out that a lot of them don't have the payload capacity that you may be looking for or need. And that's a lot of where, and that's where a lot of people are going to exceed one of their weight limits. Those are going to be some of the most important numbers. And they're two of the hardest numbers to find because you have to go ahead and weigh the truck loaded up by itself. And you have to weigh it with the camper hitched up to it. So that's why those numbers can be difficult to find. And then the last number 
which is the gross combined vehicle weight rating. That's going to be the weight of the truck fully loaded, the camper fully loaded, everything weighing together going down the road. We are 26,571 pounds going down the road. So we are well within our limit because we have a gross combined vehicle weight rating of 33,000 pounds. So between my truck loaded and the camper loaded, I need to stay below 33,000 pounds and we are good. We're about 6,429 pounds below that. So we are well within our limits on that. Well, well within our limits on the payload capacity. We are well within our limits on almost everything except for that. Yes, our camper is a little overloaded for 211 pounds over the cargo capacity for the RV, but that's not too bad for full-time RVers. This is why you should always periodically weigh yourself as you go on trips, because these things change a lot, especially as you're full-time RVers. You'd be surprised how much weight you acquire over time. So that's our numbers. That's how we pan out. And this is how you find your numbers. This is a simple solution in the math and how to weigh the process to see if you're safe going down the road. Now here's some other numbers that I recommend keeping handy. Find these numbers, put them on a piece of paper. I keep them in my notes section on my phone. That way I always have them handy and ready to go. But there's gonna be times when you come up to bridges, uh, overpasses, tunnels, places where you need to know the width, you need to know the height, you need to know how far your slide outs are come out when you're parking in a campground. You don't wanna be trying to see if your slide out's gonna fit or if it's gonna hit a tree. I keep all my slide outs written. I make sure you write down how far each one comes out. You can just quick measure it when you pull in somewhere. That way if there's an electric pedestal in the way, you'll know if the slide out can get out. But here are some numbers that you should also keep handy. The length of your truck. That's pretty easy. We're 21 feet, nine inches long. Find the height of your truck. Because when you're driving light truck and you're going through parking garages, you're going to want to know the height of your truck. Next, know the length of your RV. Um, some campgrounds want to know that. Know the combined length of your truck and camper combined length. Definitely know the height of your RV. Write it down. That way you can always see it in the truck. If you can't remember it, we're 13 feet, 6 inches high. Definitely want to get to know that real quick if you're coming to an overpass and you're second guessing if you can fit under it. So find that one out. All you got to do is maybe put like a two by four in your top AC unit, whichever one's the highest, and then measure down from that two by four down to the ground. Make sure you're on a level service when you do this, but that's, that's the best way to find out the height of your camper. And again, make sure you're hooked up to the truck when you do this. You don't want to measure the camper sitting in your driveway. You want to find out the height when you're hitched up to your truck. And then it's not even a bad idea to have your weight capacities all written down. I like to keep all my numbers right here on my phone, license plate numbers, anything that a campground may need. If you have all this information, that way when you check into a new campground, you have it all handy right there. So guys, I hope all these numbers helped you out. Some important tips, safety stuff. This was a long video, but it might be the most important video I've done. Nobody wants to play tow police, but you see it all too often. You go down the road, and you see someone towing something and the truck is popped up like this and a minivan is towing something that has no business towing and it's fishtailing. So be safe out there. I hope you can find those numbers now. I hope this helps you out. But check into those payload capacities and those pin weights because those are hard numbers to find. And as always, guys, get out there, start your full-time RV adventure because why wait? We'll see you guys next week.